Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're reviewing for you Quake 2 on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by the superb PJ O'Reilly and has been adapted for video by me. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. <laughs> Look, we already went and slapped a great big fat 10 out of 10 on Quake Remastered when it dropped almost exactly two years ago, calling it a stellar port of one of gaming's true greats and an essential addition to your Switch library. So what exactly are we meant to say about this absolutely cracking remaster of its absolutely cracking sequel? Well, let's not beat around the big gun here. This really is another flawless victory for retro FPS fans. A truly exhaustive revamp of Quake 2 that respectfully tweaks and refines the core gameplay of a bona fide classic whilst making sure to pack in every bit of extra content we could have possibly asked for, and then some. Let's kick off with the main campaign itself, and depending on who you ask, this is perhaps the very best Quake game in terms of its single player offering, although Quake 3 is still the multiplayer maestro in case you were wondering. During its development, Quake 2 wasn't actually intended as a sequel to Quake at all until it became clear that using the successful IP would understandably help improve those all-important sales figures. And so what we've got here is a game that's an entirely separate narrative entity to the Lovecraftian monster slaying of its genre-defining predecessor with dank medieval mazes and cosmic horrors replaced by bleak sci-fi environs and biomechanical mutants. The core gameplay remains much the same at heart, of course, but it's also seen meaningful improvements in several key areas. Not only do you get a bunch of sexy new guns to play with in the form of the BFG, Railgun and Chaingun, but enemy AI has also been enhanced. Your strong enemies running away, hiding, regrouping, and even ducking for cover. Add to this a bunch of clever death animations which sees dying foes fire off a few rounds and desperate last stand attempts to take you out, and you've got an experience that just plays that little bit better overall. In terms of the multiplayer aspect of Quake 2, you also have new additions in the form of a fully co-op campaign, 1v1 battles, and a stupidly addictive capture the flag mode, which PJ in particular may or may not have wasted an almost illegal amount of time in his youth fully addicted to. In its original form, Quake 2 was a beast then, but with this remaster, that beast has gone fully Super Saiyan. Just like 2021's Quake revamp, Night Dive Studios, who recently served up one of 2023's very best games on other platforms in the form of System Shock, takes the reins here, and once again shows why it's the current master of the retro remaster. The team has expertly enhanced the original game's graphics with fancy new lighting and shadow techniques, added detail and depth to the scrubbed up enemy models, thrown in an incredibly useful compass mechanic, and lots of lovely new touches to the enemy behaviour that longtime fans are sure to note and love. Have you noticed how the parasite can get its tongue stuck to surfaces when it misses you now? Gosh, it's lovely, lovely stuff. Besides this souped up version of the original campaign and multiplayer modes, for the princely sum of just $7.99, uh, that's pounds, it's $9.99 in dollars. This package also includes the game's original expansions, namely The Reckoning and Ground Zero, Quake 264, and a brand new episode episode from Machine Games in the form of Call of the Machine. We've spent a bunch of time with this new content already, and it's as good as you'd expect from the Wolfenstein devs. Classic Quake gameplay and level design that feels perfectly in line with the OG, whilst also bringing a more modern eye for level flow and environmental design into play. There's also been huge effort put into accessibility options, with the game letting players know right from the get-go that it's got a menu packed full of helpful aids to toggle on and off as needed. What else have we got here? Well, there's a wealth of split-screen and online multiplayer and cooperative elements to dig into, cross-play with all other platforms to ensure that you can always find a match, support for custom maps and mods, an enhanced soundtrack, and yes, HD rumble and gyro controls have both been added to the mix. Indeed, as with Quake Remastered, unless you just can't live without 4K 120Hz, we reckon the Switch version is actually the best one to plumb for by virtue of its portability, and plus those gyro controls, they never hurt. 
Admittedly, those controls are also available on the PlayStation version, but shh. Besides all of this, you also get the id vault, which is packed full of concept art and models of weapons, enemies, and pickups, which can be rotated and zoomed as you switch between the original and the enhanced graphics. Oh, and if you dive into the development menu here, you also get to check out some super rare unused assets, original console print ads, and yes, even fully playable demos of the game from E3 and ECTS 97. Good lord. Of course, in terms of the Switch, the most important aspect here is always going to be the performance, and in both docked and handheld modes, this port looks and sounds fantastic. The frame rate sticks resolutely to 60 frames a second across the campaign, all DLCs, and that all new Machine Games episode. Even in the brief tryout of split screen mayhem that we've managed so far, we didn't have any issues whatsoever. Whatever way you slice this one, what we've got here is the definitive version of a classic FPS and one of the most impressive remastered packages that we've ever had the pleasure of diving into. Quake fans will devour this, and short of packing in some real-world de-aging tech to return us to our Twitch shooting 97 Prime, we really are struggling to think of anything negative to say about this fantastic slice of retro shooter sweetness. It's time to jump back into the boots of Bitterman and take the fight to the Strog once more. Quake 2 arrives on Switch in the form of one of the very best remasters we've ever had the pleasure of digging into. With enhanced graphics and audio, refined AI, all new animations, the id vault, a brand new episode, and all previously released DLC in the mix, plus the N64 version. This is an exhaustive package that Quake fans are going to absolutely eat up. Throwing cross-play support, gyro controls, and loads of co-op and competitive ways to play online and locally, and you've got an absolutely outstanding release. You've reached the end of the review, and that means it's time for Alex's personal thoughts, and sweet Jesus. This, this is incredible. I was admittedly a little bit too young for Quake when it first came out. Um, I think if this is 97, then I would have been five or six, something like that. Um, so I don't have any nostalgia for it beyond just seeing my friend's brother owning it. But I am a big fan of retro shooters, and this is, this is an excellent one. One thing that I was really surprised about was how good the new episode is as well. It throws you right in, and at least in the way that I played it, I think you can do it non-linearly, but I'm not. 100% sure. The first weapon I got was the BFG and just a load of enemies appeared. Oh, it's just so satisfying. There's no need to throw that in as well. And that's what I feel about this entire release. There was no need for them to put in all the development stuff. There was no need for all the concept art. There was no need to provide cross-play online multiplayer, like even just the, the, the single player stuff and local would have been absolutely fine, but no, they went absolutely above and beyond. From what I can see, you can even play this LAN. That's just ridiculous. In these days when a simple port of a 13-year-old game can be released at near full price without online capabilities, to see a release like this is just such a wonderful, wonderful breath of fresh air. It is just an absolute gold mine of information for anyone who's nerdy and geeky about this sort of thing. Yeah, you know, you can you can just play the game if you like, but you can also go and you can view all the different variants and like unreleased models for get Oh my god. This is just oh it's mind blowing. I've had so much fun with this and it was really really tough to tear myself away from it so that I could actually record this. It's it's an absolute triumph, and I really hope this is like, this is going to spur on other developers to release their classic games in a similar form. I mean, like, I'm not expecting Nintendo to ever do this because, I mean, it's Nintendo. Can you imagine if other developers started doing this? You know, you get like classic Sonic games with like beta stuff. I mean, there's so much rich information there that is just lost to the public. And you just stick it on and you get this kind of reaction. This is insane. Developers, more of this. More of this. God damn it, more of this.